absolutely get it. In fact, I used to love football. But when you realize your whole country itself is being destroyed and that pastimes like the NFL, that's lost about 40% of its viewers, are now, on average, these anti-American, anti-gun, anti-family engines of nanny state more and more, it really takes the fun out of it, doesn't it? But I don't blame you for going and watching the game. In fact, I'm rooting for the Patriots because you've got Michael, the self-propelled stomach, more, and the left is all demonizing it because the owner and the coach and the star quarterback, the Patriots, won't demonize President Trump and won't, under their bullying, turn their back on him. And so I really respect that. And you got to respect their winning streak as well. I think they're like the most winning team ever. So I will be watching the vaunted Patriots hopefully defeat the Rams. Uh, but I personally won't feel bad if they lose because it's a simulation so that I, as a man, don't think about life, my children, business, being involved, being informed. So I go and learn all the players and learn all the angles. And it uses my military brain for a simulation like football instead of for real life. So my computing power is not for vestigial bread and circuses on record design to get men not to be men. Because full-grown men playing games, full-grown men being the heroes because they play games, is a diversion from the real world. I'm not saying anybody's bad for watching it, anybody's bad for even being obsessed with it, but I went to a restaurant this morning with my wife and my uh, youngest daughter, because the other kids were visiting uh, every other weekend with their mother, and uh, I just, it's all anyone was talking about, and all the men were like, I like this player, I like that player, and it's just all I heard. Meanwhile, the very existence of our country is in crisis, and the area of your brain that knows how to understand football scores and players and knows who they're married to and all this crap, that's the area of your brain meant for knowing where your kids are at and knowing how the three branches of government work. Because I know all these men that, man, they're experts on golf and football and baseball and, and, and soccer or whatever it is they're into. But they don't know anything about anything else. And it's really sad that we traded out Americans being known for knowing how to build things and do things like the Wright brothers and Henry Ford and how to be explorers and fighters and inventors. Those were all our heroes trailblazers but now it's steroid heads on average who are arrogant and completely mentally ill so there's one thing that's really narcissistic and that's professional sports okay i'm done with my opening salvo there i'm done talking about it but we'll get into the left saying we're going to take knees during the halftime show and all this other anti-american crap uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that but when we come back I am super loaded for bear today, broadcasting the world, literally, with dozens of TV programs with characters based on me that are total frauds and thousands of news productions on broadcast television and cable news lying about me and hundreds of thousands of news articles the last three years putting out nothing but disinformation. Let me tell you, there's a reason they want this broadcast shut down, this battered, bleeding transmission and the wounds never felt so good. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, we have the globalist number. That means their blueprint, the cut of their jib. You know, the dimensions, the width and depth and spectrum of who we're dealing with, and they listen to it, and we know more about them than they know about themselves, and they get really freaked out and say, make it stop. Well, it's not going to stop. No matter what happens to InfoWars or myself, it's just going to continue on and on in the animating struggle for liberty. And I see a lot of evidence that things are turning the corner. Let me just tell you what's coming up today. This is in not in order of importance because I've been sitting here for like 30 minutes before I went live saying this is all too insane. What do I hit first? The halftime show is going to be a bunch of taking a knee, America's evil crap. Uh, and, and, and you'll see other antics during the Star Spangled Banner. So that just shows who's running this country still. You know, the NFL's lost 35 to 40 percent of its viewers the last couple of years. They just can't stop carrying out their mission, uh, the globalist against the country. Jack, the owner of Twitter, Dorsey, has come out 
and made more bizarre statements about yours truly and about the president. We're we'll replaying those clips. That's coming up extremely uh, revealing. The president has come out and criticized Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who is a new candidate to be the uh, replacement for Baghdad Bob. Remember Baghdad Bob back in 2003 when fighter bombers are dropping bombs about a mile behind him and mushroom clouds are exploding from 1,000-pound bombs? And he's saying, we have defeated the Americans. We have driven them back to Kuwait. They're all dead. And half of Baghdad had already fallen. Well, it's the same thing out of this guy. First, he says, okay, it's me in the black face. I'm sorry. Then he says, it's not me, even though it's a whole page about him. Now there's photos of him in the same yearbook wearing the exact same checkered pants. It doesn't matter, folks. It's a diversion and a distraction from him on television last week saying, we keep babies alive after birth and then kill them so they can harvest their organs. That's the big story here, as Senator Ted Cruz and others have pointed out. I don't care what color you are. You don't need to be killed so your organs are taken. So we're going to be delving into all of that. But see, this is one of those stories that I call a skeleton key or a Rosetta Stone because it opens so many avenues and so many venues into understanding it. Because not once, not twice, not three times, I personally, this morning while I was on the elliptical at 7 a.m., thought instead of watching Fox, I'll watch CNN to see if the Chiron again says that the governor of Virginia is a Republican. We have the video, at least three cases that we've caught on video, bigger than Dallas. They're still doing it, saying he is a Republican. You understand the criminal commitment to lying that CNN is? So that was a big battle that was last year in that runoff election, that off-year election. That whole thing was a huge battle over Northam beating the Republican narrowly. And it was supposedly this big bellwether for Democrats. And then they all know he's a Democrat. And they're saying he's a Republican. So see, that's just the level of the deception because they're not gonna get in trouble for that. And their average brain dead viewer believes it. In fact, we have an extensive video on Infowars.com where Caitlin Bennett, one of our great reporters went out and the majority of people on the street, cause it's unedited, it's just the clips back to back, believed that the governor is a Republican and that he and Trump are both in the KKK. Now, do I need to explain to folks that the KKK was literally founded by the Democratic Party in 1866. And that of all the famous people that have served in government that were KKK, it's Democrats. But again, that's the inversion of reality. It doesn't matter. Just say it enough, and you've got these idiots out there who believe it. And CNN is going to cater to whatever they want. Remember, CNN is preying on you and your family. When you tune into it, it's just, I mean, one time they put up a, a, a Chiron on me saying KKK leader Alex Jones. And they're all just testing. Like, don't believe me, you can go to Google and just type in Alex Jones, CNN, KKK leader. And I'm up there on Mount Bunnell giving a speech about Trump winning the election, and they're so pissed, they just say, former KKK leader praises Trump for appointing Bannon. Alex Jones, Infowars. What the hell? But see, that's how they roll, folks. And I had a guy in a restaurant this morning. When I went to the bathroom, I'm walking out, and he walks up, and he goes, you know, I love Homeland. And the guy's, like, shaking. He's like, are you really like that guy? And I said, that's a TV show, dude. I don't have time to watch it. So I, I've seen a few episodes. It's total crap. He's like, I just, it's just, uh, 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 and like ran off. I mean, and I had that happen last week. People believe I'm the character because they, they, it's based on me. They admit it. 
but they lie. They, they say I've got hundreds of employees with fake computer banks just putting lies out constantly. So they, they hit me with fake fiction. They hit me with fake news. you got to ask, why are they doing that? Because it's part of a bigger plan. And when we return, we've discovered the plan that affects every man, woman, and child on this planet. Every man, woman, and child, we have them. We have the smoking gun that could bring them down. We'll cover it when we come back. And then we're going to get into Venezuela. Will collapse now. Everything's turned against Maduro. I predict he's gone within three weeks. That's my prediction. We'll see if I'm wrong. I've got about a 97% accuracy rate. And I told you Trump would declare an emergency a few months ago, or he should, but he got advised not to and backed off. But I predict that the Democrats are going to stonewall again, and Trump will do an emergency if he does the right thing. But remember, told you about national emergencies before it was even in the news, before it was even being discussed. We do our homework. So that's all coming up as well. <laughs> and then some other really crazy stuff uh, we're going to be uh, breaking down. Party of no. Once opposed, Democrats now back wars just to thwart Trump. And now Democrats are actually want longer prison sentences for black people. No, I've got articles. They're like, no, no, no. Well, of course, the Democrats passed the law to give blacks three times the prison sentences. And Hillary said they're dogs. She said like, like wild, wild predators on the elliptical to CNN. And sure as hell, they did it again. Those articles are on Infowars.com. And I'm going to be talking about that with one of the writers from Big League Politics, the group that broke the big story on the uh, medical school annual and more. Um, and he also manages one of our TV stations we're on. So, so we'll be joined by our guest coming up in the next segment, Mr. Pappert. So I look forward to that coming up. Tom Pappert with KCTV, uh, KCTU, Wichita. We're, we're basically neck and neck to be number one TV station after one year on their station. 24 hours a day, very, very exciting. So Mr. Papert's going to be joining us. He also writes for Big League Politics that broke all this. So that's coming up. Now, they don't want us on air, so we'll point things out like that. We were the first to point out that the school kids from the Catholic school in Kentucky, the Covington kids, didn't start the fight. They had the fight started with them and did a great job standing down, which most of us couldn't do. Took a lot of courage, took a lot of will, took a lot of wisdom that we don't seem to see in adults these days. Now, how is all this happening? How is, how are you seeing unified corporate media with all the same headlines in the same order over and over again? I'm about to drop a huge bombshell on new listeners. Regular listeners are going to say, Alex, we know all about this. Well, hey, heh, let me tell you. This is coffin nails to the system. Congress gets involved in this. The president takes action against this. It's game over. So this got pointed out by some of our researchers, Harrison Smith, and I went and looked it up, and sure as Hades, I'd read the executive orders, I'd read the bill two years ago, two and a half years ago that Obama signed, and I'd forgotten that it elapsed and it ended last week. And that's why there were all the giant layoffs at dozens and dozens of major leftist, globalist propaganda outfits like BuzzFeed and Huffington Post and others. And more huge ones are set to be announced this week. Now, why is that? Dr. McCam shot please for TV viewers. This is out of uh, Public Affairs, the Washington Post. 2013, Obama. It's law passed legalizing CIA engaging in deception against the American people. U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. Now, let's continue. Just giving you background here. Because hiding in plain view, Obama signed that executive order. They passed a defense bill that he signed in December 2016, so two years and three months ago. And it gave billions of dollars tranched out in 100 million, 200 million packages for what you've seen. So when you see all the TV shows demonizing Trump and Alex Jones, and you see every Netflix show, and you see Homeland, and you see Comedy Central, and you see 
uh, the opposition uh, on, on, on I, mean, I mean, literally dozens of programs just against me, fiction, nonfiction, everything. Megyn Kelly, all of it. And $76 million contracts. That was $2 billion of taxpayer money, and it's all right here. This is the scandal of scandals of scandals. And Trump was set to sign an executive order to kill it, but he never did. Well, guess what? Obama can only put defense spending out two years. That's how it is. So he signed in funding against Trump in America for all the disruption you see, not just against me, but the taking knees and the cop killing groups and Black Lives Matter. That's all. We have the documents funded to destabilize the country. So think about how huge this is. And no one's reverse engineered this but us and Zero Hedge. So U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans, and it continues on from there. The NDAA legalizes the use of propaganda on U.S. citizens. Business Insider, Austin American Statesman, U.S. Senate panels okay funds to fight online propaganda, 2016. And it says... $160 million in the effort over the next two years, starting in late January when the defense authorization rolls over, 2017, and rolling for two years. Just ended last week. Boom. That's just one of the funding groups. And that's why those groups shut down. They were on record getting the money out of the Department of Defense. The left suddenly loves the Department of Defense. They suddenly love wars. They suddenly love keeping blacks in prison with three times the uh, you know, time that whites get. They're the ones that passed the bill in 93. They're the KKK. They're the baby organ harvesters. They're the bad guys. And the blue blood Republicans are just scared of them. Well, aren't you scared too? You've seen what they do to me or anybody else stands up to them. The answer is stand up though because it's better to fight than live on your knees. So Obama quietly signs the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act. They list all their enemies as Russian with no proof and then engage in covert operations with the Department of Defense and CIA with select groups they've chosen interfacing with trusted members of the press to counter the foreign enemy. And I did a live report on this last night where I played the congressional hearings where they said Alex Jones is a Russian agent. No proof. I'm going to the hearing. They just do it. H.R. 5181, that's the defense bill. Go read it for yourself. It's law. And now all the giant layoffs happened because two years ran out and the money is gone. The vice is laying off all of them. So there you go. So that's how the cow ate the cabbage. And I thought all of you might want to know what really happened. And you know, quite frankly... I'm not a glutton for punishment, but if I need to fight, I will. I'm proud of this audience, and I'm proud of this crew who have gone up against the hijacked U.S. government and the Pentagon and the CIA and everything they can throw at us with disinfo, lies, deplatforming, taking our sponsors, taking our bank accounts, hitting us up one side and down the other, black op teams, surveillance teams, harassment you wouldn't believe, and things I can't even get into on air, Mueller trying to set me up, everything else. But you know what? I'm not out there with a bunch of guys freezing to death going over the river and going to take on a German group of forces four times bigger than us like George Washington. I am blessed to just sit here in this studio and be able to go through psychological warfare and punishment, and, and, and a lot of it's not fun, but this is 21st century warfare. I am blessed to do something that's just 10% of what my forebearers did. It's a lot easier than having my shoes fall off of me and dragging giant you know, uh, uh, guns that weigh 10,000, 20,000 huge guns from Ticonderoga through the snow with people freezing to death and dying to beat the bloody British. So this is easy. As long as you back us, you've got the commitment. And I know it's going to get rougher. It's going to they're gonna, it's gonna get physical. That's the next phase. And I'm ready to take my licks. But just know this. We're winners. America's winning. And it's coming back from the dead. Think about how incredible that is. So I was thinking earlier, what do you even called this it's so sensational it's so scandalous obama funding of fake news to counter trump just ended or obama 
s signed legislation funding fake news attacks on Trump. And the money just ran out or learn why the layoffs are happening. Obama secretly funded them and the money ran out. I don't know how you come up with a word with our tax money given to all these leftist Soros approved jerks. And again, Obama's in office a couple of years, signs an executive order, gets a law passed to do it. Then it all happens. And then it happens in live time in congressional hearings. And I experience it myself. Why didn't Trump sign executive orders to repeal it? Why didn't he reverse it? Word was he was going to do that. Doesn't matter. Now it has expired. And you still got the Soros funding and other things. But the point is, they're running on fumes, ladies and gentlemen. We're hitting our second wind. And we've just got to do the right thing and commit to this. But listeners have to understand, we are domino number one. And they believe they can take us down. They can get everybody else. Next hour after our guest leaves us, um, I'm not trying to make myself gonzo journalism the center of the story. Jack Dorsey, owner of Twitter, was on with Joe Rogan, who has eight to one votes against his videos now. He used to be 90% positive. Everybody literally hates him. Everybody I know calls him Joe the Snake Rogan now. He just is unbelievable. Uh, but we've got um, we've got eight, eight to one anti-Joe Rogan votes every time he attacks me, just like Vice did. And, and it, something special is happening here. People get what's going on. They see through the propaganda. So don't buy the fake polls against Trump and the rest of it. Big things are happening. So I'm very, very blessed to be here. We're going to go to our guests for the next couple segments into the next hour. Then I'll get into all the news I haven't hit yet. But please remember, the one big check made against the globalists, despite their deplatforming, is we're on talk radio, we're on TV stations, um, and we're at Infowars.com and Newswars.com with millions of people coming in every day to read the articles and spread the videos, and it's getting out there, and that's why they're so pissed, trying to shut down our bank accounts, trying to, to take us off PayPal, which they did, because people are hungry for freedom, and they want to demoralize you. They want to keep you from having speech. So go get a Alexandria Cortez shirt where she's a dog, and we have the headline, Capitalist Walk Dog Socialist Eat em, a.k.a. a la... Venezuela, because she said she wants to have Trump Jr. arrested for just tweeting that. She said, I have subpoena power. We'll throw your ass in jail. Just this is a f flaming authoritarian. So we have a shirt where she's a dog. It, is, it has become a bestseller. Uh, get the supplements. Uh, Super Mel Vitality is cold-pressed herbs. It takes four times the amount of herbs to make it than the normal powdered type that works as well as great. We have uh, Anthroplex and a bunch of others that are excellent. m 4 They're even stronger, but they're, but they're powdered. It's different when it's cold pressed. We can't source it anymore. We're trying to fix that. So I said it's discontinued. It's still 50% off. Our new best selling product, Turbo Force. Turbo Force. It's a supplement to brain force as a nootropic. This is total body, pre workout, total day use, clean burning, next level energy drink, uh, powder. I suggest you only take half a dose the first time you take it. It's insane. And it just came out of a week ago already, 23 reviews, 4.8 stars. Thank you all for your support, InfoWarsLife.com or AAA-253-3139. But without you, Soros and Hillary and the dirtbags will win. And uh, they have done so much to try to crush us, taking our sponsors, not letting us advertise online, demonizing us, uh, now taking five of our six merchant accounts, but we got some backups. I mean, they are in my business trying to sue right now to shut us down. Uh, we can hold out as long as you support us. So thank you. But we've got, everybody needs fish oil. What it does for energy, your body, your brain, your heart. For your children, we have honor roll. For adults, we have two different types. It's the best out there. Infowarsstore.com. Okay, let's go to our guest. And I appreciate him on short notice. I was like, wait, wait, our guest, Tom Pappard, who is the manager at KCTU Wichita that carries us 24 hours a day on its sub channel. It's become one of the most popular channels. Uh, their argument may be the most popular. There's now battles with bigger stations wanting it. Uh, but the point is uh, that uh, Tom Pepper, obviously is a busy guy, has a foot in both of those. Uh, but he also writes for Big League Politics. So I wanted to get him on because Big League Politics broke the blackface with the governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, and it also broke the KKK thing from a tip from a citizen. So I wanted to get him on to talk about this. And why are we surprised another Democrat is running around 
in a KKK outfit and or blackface because it's his photo page all about him and he's wearing pants. The blackface is him. You can see it's, it's him, his hands, his facial structure, his hairstyle. It's him in blackface uh, with his buddy, I guess, in the KKK. Why are we surprised that the Democrat is obsessed with the KKK? That's who they are. That's who that. So first he admits it's him and apologizes. Now he says, oh, it isn't him, even though it's his page. Uh, and now, but don't worry, CNN keeps saying he's a Republican. So there's so many layers to this, Tom Pappard. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on, Alex. And, you know, maybe we shouldn't be surprised at all because this is typical Democrats. You know, it's a cliche at this point, but, yes, the Democrats are the real racists. And I do think that this story, this extremely viral story about the guy's blatantly racist yearbook photo, it would not be a story right now if he did not endorse murdering babies. You know, that's how this guy got into the news to start. He said, yeah, what you do is you deliver the baby, then you make it comfortable and uh, the mother decides to kill it, so you kill it. That's that's just all there is to it. I guess maybe the environmentalists like that because it's less resources. Exactly. I don't so exactly it's now left, the left from partial birth abortion to now in New York trying to pass it in Virginia, and we're talking post-birth abortion. Right, right, which is murder. I mean, it's infanticide. How on earth do you uh, t have a viable, screaming, laughing, crying infant and say, yeah, we're going to abort this? I, what does that look like to these people? I don't understand. So I think that it was kind of a one-two punch this week. You know, really, it was four steps. First, we have the guy come out and blatantly endorse infanticide. Then the next day, he has a press conference. He doubles down, says he has no regrets. Day number three comes around. He's blaming racist Republicans, because clearly we just took his statements out of context, and it's all our fault. We misunderstood him. Then day number four, Friday, of course, Patrick Howley, editor-in-chief at Big League Politics, gets a tip from a citizen, confirms it, racist blackface Ku Klux Klan photos. He admits it's him. Then the next day, oh, no, 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 that wasn't me. I just put shoe polish on my face one time to dress like Michael Jackson. That That's all I did. This photo isn't me. It Meanwhile, is they've had members of, of, the, uh, of the government there in Virginia at the state level, I have to resign just over blackface alone. And this is with a KKK guy. And look, here's the point. I grew up as a conservative Christian, abolitionist type background where people are ashamed of that America was ever like this. And But then anytime I got around leftists, they were the ones that were racist. And it's just something that, quote, minorities don't know who the Democrats are because the media has covered it up. And I think stuff like this is breaking through. You know, you look at President Trump's support among Hispanics, and it's skyrocketed from 19% a couple years ago up to 50% today. You know, the Democrats for too long have thought that blacks and Hispanics and other minorities, I think they honestly think they're stupid. That's a form of Covington kids, or that's this governor, where the, the, the system's out putting out its BS that, all oh, these babies, you keep them alive, take their organs, no big deal. I double down on that, it blows up in their face or going and bullying the Covington kids and the whole media lying about it, now all the lawsuits are about to get filed next week, blows up in their face. But it's then how corporate media responds with CNN over and over again saying the governor's a Republican when he's a famous Democrat that they champion. Not like it's some obscure city council member and they got it wrong. After they get caught, they double down because it's subliminal. I mean, face it, if you're a regular CNN viewer and believe that crap, there's something wrong with you. These are people that want to have their crazy worldview supported. Here's an example. Uh, Paul Watson wrote about this on Friday. Google always says when they have trends, so does Twitter, if it's a politician, R, D, or independent, or L. So it's R, D, L, or, or I. Sanders is really a Democrat, but it says I, out of Connecticut. Magically, Paul wrote about this on Google and on Twitter, magically for the first time ever, it didn't say what he was because he was the top two trends. His KKK outfit, if that was him, or the blackface, turns out he's the guy in blackface. Those were the top two trends on Twitter and Google. So guess what? They run in real quick. Well, hell, give CNN credit, Tom Pappard. They go further. They just add an R on there. I mean, this is, again, the, the whole way they respond is a window into the wanton, incredible deceit, Tom. 
it's almost like a willful schizophrenia. They live in upside down world where only Republicans can be racist. So therefore, Ralph Northam must be a Republican. That's the only uh, logical answer to this. But, you know, obviously it was just an attempt to confuse their easily led sheepish viewers. Obviously, it was not a mistake. You know, that's everything is a mistake. And these mistakes only ever seem to hurt Republicans and help Democrats over at CNN and Facebook and Twitter and et cetera. It is just blatant lying on its face. We actually caught that. Uh, one of our uh, writers was watching CNN and saw that happen. And he, we just all bust out laughing at big league politics. It's so hilarious to us that they think that America is this dumb. And, you know, maybe a segment is the potbelly goblins who throw hot coffee at you. Maybe those guys are that dumb. You know, maybe they are a uh, low hanging fruit. But I think the average person is getting sick of this. And if you don't laugh, you cry. So I hope that they're laughing at it. Well, I've talked a lot about this. I've got an old family friend. She's known me since I was about two, three years old. I was best friends with her son until he died from an infectious bacteria deal when he had a surgery at a hospital, but that's another story. And uh, one of her, uh, uh, her grandkids is, you know, a, a, a part black because her daughter married a black man, a, a great guy. And she was going to a major university in Texas and was kind of a liberal buying into it. But before she graduated this year, I guess now last year, they were saying, by the way, we're, the, your final exam is on KKK leader Alex Jones, and he's a Nazi, and he hates black people, and he, he hurts people, and all this other crap. And she got so upset, they threatened to kick her out and take her degree and threatened her. Well, it caused a total conversion because she knows been on the boat with me and been on camp outs. I noticed she was a baby. I've literally, like, given her a bottle. And she was like, what the, it was like, it went so far because they teach a curriculum now that I'm the devil. I'm like this, right. th th they've, they've stolen my identity, created this new person I'm not. And then people that know me, it's like, they're like, this is crap. Well, people say that you're the Homeland uh, TV show character from that is mocking you, mocking Alex Jones. And it's like, no, of course, these people are totally nuts. And I do think that the academia, maybe they have fooled themselves. Maybe they believe their own propaganda. They swallowed their own Kool-Aid and they believe it. But that is an excellent example. You know, I was similar. I was just a libertarian Ron Paul guy. I went to college and after four years of indoctrination and then uh, two years of the Trump campaign and then the first year of his presidency, I became a hardcore Republican, and I'm, or I don't even know if that's the right word, a hardcore conservative, a Trump conservative, and I'm never looking back. They drove me further to the right in a good way. Not, you know, crazy right, but they drove me further into sanity is what I like to say. And I do have to add, Alex, big league politics is the latest in the now we're the racist club. Uh, we had, I'm not going to give them credit, but a leftist rag, well-known leftist rag, wrote an article saying, you know, the website that came up with this Ralph Northam scoop? They're white supremacists, and they said because we wrote some articles about Roy Moore, therefore we are well, racist. Well, sure, but this white is what's happening. L listen, you've been listening to big league politics as fake news because you guys, I'm, I'm quite frankly envious, but it's a good envy. I'm glad Zero Hedge is there. I'm glad you're there. That makes me feel good, but but I am envious. You guys keep breaking so much huge news. So obviously, your real media, fake media, that's saying that you know g g g the governor of Virginia is a Republican, they can't exist because you exist. So they're angry. Right. I think that is exactly right. They're mad that they can no longer lie. It's the same reason they have to kick us off social media. It's the same reason you're no longer allowed on network TV. Nobody wants to have you on their show anymore since Piers Morgan looked like an idiot after talking to you. They know by the way, that, that got voted by the L.A. Times and a bunch of others. It was the highest rated show he ever did. His ratings boosted for two months and then plunged to nothing after I came on, and just like Megyn Kelly. So they know booking me on national TV, top ratings. It just explodes. But uh, I'm not bragging. My Q scores are as high as they get. I mean, it, it, the, the highest thing they thought was hot chicks on Mexican TV. But I'm, I've got, I mean, I'm not bragging. It's just I have higher Q scores than hot, hot Mexican chicks on Mexican TV, which I'm sorry, I have the highest Q scores in the world. I don't know why. Well, I, I think it's a sincerity. Authentic. You're it's telling the truth. Yeah. You're not lying to people. You tell them exactly what's going on. You don't dress it up with a teleprompter and, and, and here is what my PR agent says I should stay. You know, no, you just tell it exactly. And like again, I'm exactly, but I'm not talking about me. They've made it about me and said right. I'm fake and I'm a fraud no you've been here you we didn't pre-script we're talking about this is just real people man talking about real stuff like around the coffee table that's what people want you know there and we don't want racism and we don't want to fight with people we want to have a future we want to be successful 
and Hollywood is a poison trying to make us fight with each other, and I think we're hitting the carry capacity. I'm not just trying to be positive here, Tom. I think the tipping point's already reached. The globalists don't know it yet, but everybody I know who's got any brain cells is just done with MSM. You know, ever since Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, then we had the Covington teens. Now we have this ridiculous Ralph Northam situation. People are seeing over and over and over again, the media cannot be trusted. You have to look for alternative voices. And what better alternative voices to go to than the ones that the media, who you can't trust, are demonizing. Go to Alex Jones. Go to InfoWars. Go to big league politics. Those are the people you can trust. And it's really easy. They make it super easy. It's almost like they give you a short list. Uh, by the way, we hate Alex Jones. We hate big league politics. We hate Breitbart. We hate Gateway Pundits. And so it's just like telling viewers, so maybe, okay, I'll go check out Alex Jones. Then I'll check out Big League Politics. They're doing our work for us. We could not pay for this kind of marketing. But see, there's the paradox. Then they sue you. Then they try to take your bank accounts. Did you see where I showed mainstream news confirming Obama turned the CIA loose on independent media, particularly Breitbart and InfoWars? And, and then they thought I was the weaker target because of my flamboyance. I mean, this has been hell. But now the funding ended last week. So what are they going to do now? Lay them all off. It's been beautiful. And I love the learn to code movement. You know, when uh, when coal miners all throughout the Midwest and, and the Rust Belt, when coal miners, factory workers, etc., when they lost their job because the globalists spent 30 years shipping their jobs overseas, Power that's plant what the journalists workers. told them to do, learn to code. And yet when we tell them to learn to code, we get Twitter banned for it. Oh, but Jack Dorsey says that's an algorithm, which is total crap. You know, the Nazis came to IBM and they said, our people don't like killing people. So they did some test death camps in like 35, long before Hitler launched the final solution. And, and Thomas Watson of IBM said, well, say the computer said it. And then he was given the highest award, even above Hitler, by Hitler. And so he said, you just program the computer for what you want, and then no one feels bad when they're lining men, women, and children up in pits and shooting them because the computer said so, Tom. That's exactly right. You know, they always like to hide behind this mysterious algorithm as though it were created in nature and they just discovered it and plugged it into their mainframe. And now they're using God's own algorithm to determine what is racist and what is hate speech and what is not. No, of course not. It's made by a small group of radical left wing programmers at all of these social media companies. It's the same story every time. And then it gives them something to hide behind. You know, I've run businesses before. You run a business. You know how to manage this. You get a series of of social media content moderators and you say hi these 10,000 pages are your responsibility if anything oh, yeah, comes it's up, all selectively enforced i think we're going to win we got two more segments with you and, and then i'm going to get into some really insane news because i'm not into owning people and victory laps but i realize in this modern era when we are owning people when they have tilted board against us like twitter like google like facebook like vice like joe rogan um, I talked to some really smart people, and they said, don't worry, Alex, this is going to turn around. Uh, this is going to blow up in their face. But I got to tell you, they are really getting their ass kicked right now. And like you said, the, the Kavanaugh thing was so ridiculous. Six accusers, five get caught lying. The, the, the six can't prove any of it. All the witnesses say the opposite. And now it's just a chain reaction. I was just a questioner early on compared to other people that got a forum. There were questioners before me, a lot smarter than me. So they think trying to restrict us, people already have the hunger. They already get it. It's a, Stelter calls us a virus. Well, call that then a virus. The point, yeah, we're the virus to death. There's a chain reaction here. I don't think they can stop, but let's be serious. How could the globalist try to grab victory from the jaws of defeat? Because I smell their defeat. I think the number one strategy that they're already using is they want to make it so you and I, we can't do business. They want to make it worse than that. They want to make it so I can't get a credit card, so you can't open a bank account. And yes, this is going to make people mad. Yes, this is going to open eyes. But what it's also going to do is scare people out of entering the arena. It's going to keep people from saying, yeah, I'm a writer for Big League Politics, or yeah, I work for InfoWars. It's going to make them too terrified to step in. And people have to have some courage here in the face of all this, 
because we've seen it. We know that it's MasterCard that is going to Patreon and saying, you must drop these pro-freedom personalities or else we're no longer going to process your payments. And, and let me stop you. Goes that MasterCard goes back to no Trump's biggest failure is they didn't go after the tens of thousands of patriots, Christian groups, veterans groups, FBI associations that are conservative, all these groups, when he was in for eight years persecuting him with the IRS beyond Nixon. So they've been green lit to do this. And if we allow this, then we get what we deserve. Trump must take action. Well, and I have a theory. I think that President Trump, obviously he knows about this. He's received documents from InfoWars. He's received documents from a ton of other alternative media personalities showing exactly what the president can do. He knows what the problem is. He knows what the solution is. But they are letting President Trump remain the underdog even while in office because when they can go after you and they can go after big league politics and they can go to KCTU and attack our local advertisers and say, do not give money to this station because they, they have a Nazi on the airwaves. When they can do this type of stuff, it makes us still look like the underdogs. We won two years ago, almost three years ago, yet we are still the fighting guys. We're still the people to root for. It is immense branding for the president. And I I do have to join you though, Alex. And I, you know, a lot of people in this media, in this alternative media world, we are financially and personally less well off. Look at Roger Stone than we were in November sure. of 2016. And, and, and listen, I, Tom, I understand that that spin from people, but let's just say it. Trump's surrounded. He's trying to do a good job, and he's done good on the Supreme. So many places he's done great. Thank God he's there. Love Trump. But when it comes to not declaring the emergency and letting them have the 30-something day shutdown that hurt the economy, should have done the right thing as original instinct, our instinct. On, you know, so, so let's just say it. We're getting the hell beat out of us here. And I'm not a wimp. I'm not going to sit there and go, I'm going to quit because this is happening. But right. the president, people want leadership and they want action now. And I get this whole paradigm of, you know, let them persecute us. It'll make us stronger. Well, well, and I, again, it's going to backfire because if we aren't here, if Alex Jones isn't there, all the rest of it, and and of course, there's the local leftist groups are now protesting. Oh, there's a Nazi. Oh, oh, it's not the governor, Ralph Northam. We'll play some of these clips. Oh no, it's not the guy in blackface. It's not the guy that wants to kill babies after they're born and has a bill introduced like New York passed. No, it's that Alex Jones, you know, that wanted legal reform so that blacks didn't get three times longer sentences than whites, you know, that Hillary got passed and called them alpha predators that must be made to heal like dogs. Jeez, wow, <laughs> wow, that, but black men are dogs. <laughs> wow, that's Hillary, but that's, it's the, she can even make racist jokes that all blacks all look the same. I don't think so. I mean, exactly. Like, she said we had to bring them to heal, Alex, bring them to heal like they're dogs. And that is the Clinton Democrat platform till today. You know, yeah. But wait, be, wait, 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 no wait. You, you were telling me here. earlier, I've got to be taken off, though, in Wichita. The, there's a Nazi on air. You know, it's a funny story. We had our uh, VP of programming, a, a wonderful woman named Tracy. She got a phone call one morning at 7.30 before our business hours even started from somebody saying that she saw you endorse Hitler at 4 in the morning. And so we're like, what the hell are you talking about? Alex Jones, there's no way that happened, first of all. Second of all, I doubt Hitler's name was even brought up. We we had a DVR. We looked, we rewinded to what on earth was going on because, of course, it's a repeat of the Alex Jones show at 4 in the morning. And we find out that what it was, this is the most hilarious thing I've seen to date. You were comparing Hillary Clinton to Hitler, and because this guy loved Hillary so much, that must have meant you were, by association, endorsing Hitler, because Hillary is so wonderful, so you must also like Hitler. These people are totally deranged. We have another guy, he has a list of all of our InfoWars advertisers, and he has called each and every one of them and tried to get them to drop us, and they just laugh and say, no, we like Alex Jones, sorry, click. But see, that's the right answer. Instead, everyone else grovels and bows down when these people make up. And anytime you go check it, it's not true. It's like saying Trump says all Mexicans are criminals. He goes, wonderful people, great people, employ a lot of great Mexicans in my companies. But you got a lot of criminals coming across illegally. And Mexico's sending its worst in many cases, which they admit that turns into all Mexicans are horrible. BS, man. And, and that's, it's, a, it's the same thing. They, they false brand. They do. They pull the same trick over and over and over again. And it becomes so transparent, so 
blatantly illogical that, again, I think this is waking more and more people up, and they must realize that. They would not be ratcheting it up the actual censorship if they didn't realize that their trick is no oh, longer working. Oh, that's what's insane. Is, is, and I don't need like virtue signal that my grandfathers were both in World War II, but I literally, all, both of them almost died, okay, in World War II in the Army Air Corps. Both almost died. And we're super guilty that all their buddies died and they didn't die. And then one of my grandfathers, when I get into the story, my mom's like, don't be eccentric. Your grandfather's a little eccentric. He was a big lease hound for oil companies in New Mexico and Texas. And back then, you could only go get something to eat at a military base, okay, in, in like New Mexico or, or, or the panhandle of Texas. And there was damn Nazis everywhere. And he used to get into it with them because they'd shoot their mouths off. My, my, I'm almost dead because of Nazis. I didn't almost exist. My mother and my father almost didn't exist because of them. And then I get to have little pieces of crap crap call me a nazi because it's their magic word when they're funded the democrats by a literal nazi collaborator right who admits it who brags about it says it was one of the happiest times of his life no regrets at all you know there's two ways to look at that one you can say uh that's really weird and two you can say well, you had no problems with it now as an adult maybe when you're 14 you can buy it but my god apologize realize it was terrible don't double down but these are the people we're dealing with and it goes back to the northern situation where the man dressed in either blackface or in a kkk outfit i think he was probably the clansman because he says use face recognition software and that will confirm my innocence well kind of hard to do that when you're wearing a white he knows you can't do head. it off of an old black and white photo I, I, I disagree he's wearing have you seen the pants it's on infowars.com that's true yeah the he pants does have are the, same the exact, exact pants pant. and you look at his hands are kind of spindly and long uh, mm -hmm. and, and then there's photos of him but look look it doesn't matter it does, it's a page it's, about him it's the page about ralph northam in the damn book he's the school president right I mean, right. he, he, never he's the... the book. He had nothing to say except it, he did give them the other two photos, but he had no say in the yearbook. The man is the worst liar there's ever been. You know, you can tell the difference between Alex Jones telling a story about his family and this guy admitting that he put black shoe polish on his face to look like Michael Jackson. But no, 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 that's not him in the other photo. It, it, absolutely insane. And Alex, I do have to because I know we're running short on time. I have to say that. I when all this news was breaking this last week, I came down with a horrible, god awful sinus infection. And I asked my buddy at InfoWars, Dan Lyman, you know, what do I do? There's all this news I need to write and I can't breathe. And he told me, colloidal silver, get the silver bullet. And you know what? It worked. I wasn't quite sure, but it worked like a gym. Well, I'm glad you know, Tom, I never plug, so you get me to plug. Our philosophy is simple. We go out and we find out whatever is already the best-selling, highest-rated, cleanest, best company, knowing we're a target, but that's not our main reason. It's secondary. We want you to have the best product anyway, so it works really good. So we have what's rated the safest, best, 30 parts per million. Any more parts per million gets a little toxic because you know, anything that will kill bacteria and viruses, is, it's going to be toxic, folks, like, back, like, like, like antibiotics. Nothing's perfect. Antibiotics, you'll get overused, but they're still great. Colloidal silver, let me tell you. We sell the same one Jeff Bezos sells at Whole Foods, private labeled, top company. They sell theirs on average 25. We sell ours for, you know, for average for like 22. But it is the very best. Silver Bullet, it's private labeled, but the very same thing that Jeff Bezos sells at Whole Foods and on Amazon. It's a great product. And it's at InfoWarsStore.com with a 98% review out of 2,647 reviews, 4.9 stars. That, that's from power reviews. So I'm glad you mentioned it topically in the body, whatever. It isn't a silver bullet. It's as close to a silver bullet as you're going to get. So let me ask you this. Without getting too negative or too positive. You can be in a fight. Somebody starts it. You, you got them down, but they do a left hook or a right hook and, and knock you down. W what is their ace in the hole? What are the desperate globalists and Dems? They want to plunge the economy. They want to cause racial division. We know what they're trying, but... What could be their 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 do sex their sneak attack at gut level? You're a smart guy. What are you worried about? Let's not be too confident here. Now. We are all being very confident right now because we just had a massive series of wins from Covington to Northam, and it just keeps getting worse and worse for the Democrats. My fear is they're going to somehow slip a poison pill in. They're going to get us all to report something that seems completely accurate, probably according to all the facts we can gain are completely accurate, and then they'll flip it, and they'll say, aha, 
Democrats reveal X, and it will completely prove, quote, unquote, prove that we are all fake news, we're all liars, we're everything they say about us. So that is my fear. And I think that right now, as conservative media is becoming easily the most trusted outlets on the planet, because you can no longer trust the mainstream at all. This is when our editors need to be going into overdrive, and I think they all know it because the, I think that's what's going to happen. They want to discredit us. They know that we are number one in the hearts and minds of Americans. They have to change that. They have to do it fast, and I don't know what it's going to look like. Could be any day now. Could be something related to Ginsburg. There's a lot of rumors going on with her, and if a large conservative outfit does something unwise— that could be the thing that does a cascading effect that gives more advertisers the opportunity to ditch conservative media. It gives more globalists the opportunity to gloat. Ha, we were right, and those Nazis were wrong again. So I, I, that is my fear right now. They're going to do something. They're going to... Uh... And, and it's, it's not some power trip we're on either. We just love God. We love justice. And we're committed to banging heads with these people. And they just can't stand the fact that they can't starve us out and they can't make us run and they can't intimidate us because we can't give up on who we are. We can't give in and become them. And they don't understand that. They don't understand because they're jellyfish. Now, let me get to this point. I'm not happy to have to attack Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is a very passionate, smart, um, charismatic guy but Joe is highly driven and is really a dark person and I think that comes from an insecurity complex of being from you know a poor family in Boston because you get smarter as you get older, you get wiser. And, and it's just the snapshots along the way. So I'm not attacking Joe Rogan because he had me on his podcast two years ago and it was the number one podcast he ever did and then he, he won't have me back on. I, I thought it was an ideal place to address all the fake news against InfoWars and to speak the truth. And then he kept putting out establishment talking points in the last year and really attacking me with exact talking points. And then I found out he was sponsored by Jack Dorsey. And then I found out he was sponsored by George Soros. And we're gonna get to that in a moment. This is really sad stuff. And, and you know, I learned about six months ago he was on the payroll. I mean, making more money than the Young Turks ever did. I mean, the Young Turks got something like $20 million from Qatar, Gulf State dictators. That's just really creepy stuff. And so when he said George Soros was, you know, fought the Nazis, he's a hero in World War II, it was just like, man, that's really sick, okay? He was on 60 Minutes bragging he helped round up Jews. So I, I, I called Joe about four months ago and I said, listen, this is bigger than Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. It's like a Pilgrim's Progress or a, or a Tale of Two Cities. I said, listen, man, you don't have to have me on your stupid show. I, 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 I don't care about getting on big platforms or I would have sold out. You know, they don't want to put you in big movies. They want to put me in big movies. I piss on Hollywood. I refuse their top contracts to be star in a damn movie because it's a sellout. Sure, I'd be big in movies. Sure, people watch me already. I don't need their system. I'm not a pedophile. Sorry, I'm ranting here. But I told him, I said, you run your mouth with George Soros talking points anymore. I'm coming after you because it shows you're working for them. He kept doing it. And then I got really depressed because I realized the only time I ever sold out in my life, strangely enough, because, I mean, I've known Joe for like 20 years, crap longer than that now, God. And I have this loyalty thing where it's not a sellout, but I'm like a dog. I'm so loyal that even though somebody's not my friend, I'm still loyal because they said they were. I'm having to learn, like, to not, not do that when somebody them, them themselves isn't loyal or they go off the reservation. So I'll get to all this when we come back. This is going to take some time here because this is a big thing here. This is a big deal. So the things I saw with Joe, the things I discovered about him, you know, things that other people would never know and things that I would never even go after him for. 
And then he's so confident, cozied up to Google, cozied up to Facebook, on the payroll of Jack Dorsey. I th word is, it's like a $300,000 contract a month, which I've got news about it right here. Why don't you disclose we've got our sponsor, Cash App and Bitcoin? Oh, see, Joe, see, Joe. See, I never took Bitcoin as an advertiser. Some of the radio stations I'm on have done it because I thought it was a pump and dump. I felt like it was a scam. Not, not that digital currency or cryptocurrencies are bad themselves, but the whole thing always smelled. And I knew the globalists and Soros were involved. So I turned down the million dollars a month two years ago when it hit its peak. But you didn't, did you, JoJo? And then you think you're going to sit there and attack free speech and piss all over America at the same time you pull this stuff and you've got a UT-approved research facility in Austin putting over 1,000 people a year through MK Ultra, and I've got all the names, the witnesses, the women, everything. And I knew this two years ago, but it was like so crazy. I was like not looking at it. I was just like, because I almost sold out for nothing. It's like Joe had me under a uh, spell or something. But I've never sold out. And so thank God, at the end of the day, I found redemption. Thank God. I didn't go back on Joe's show. I'd never want to talk to Joe. I never want to see that little demon. I never want to be associated with you. I don't want to be associated with selling out or failure. I just want to be away from you in L.A. and that whole leaking butthole that you are. Excuse my French. That's the allegory that hits my brain. And it's not a hate of Joe. It's that a revulsion. I don't hate you, Joe. I'm revolted by you. See the difference? You revolt me. Jack Dorsey, that little oiled pimp, that little front man of DARPA up there like a rat, like a spider, cleaning its 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 its, its pinchers. Ugh. You don't know the light because you were never in it. Thank God. People like Louis Gohmert looked at Sundar Pichai and he said, you wouldn't know the light because you've never been in it. And it's true. Of course, the enemy, when they launch their main attack, cannot be associated with me because that's who they are. We should all rejoice we're not on Twitter. We should rejoice we're not with Jack Dorsey, this fallen slave, this nothing. Look at him. He is a shish kebab for the devil. Just a little bite. Sold out for nothing. Another coward. And the good news is, when I come back, I'll get into all of it. Because now, their average video suddenly has eight to one dislikes and everyone's turning against them. And the door in the last year for them to take over, when I talked to some of the people involved with him, he went and met with university heads, professors, the think tank, CIA, and, and they've decided Joe's their weapon. Well, the human algorithm picked up on it instantly. So he's gone from an average 90% vote to an average 8 to 1 vote against him. We can show that for TV viewers. If you're a radio listener on local stations saying, who's Joe Rogan? Well, he, he, he's just a... He's Benedict Arnold. You heard about Benedict Arnold back in the Revolutionary War. You heard about Judas Iscariot. You've heard about traitors. So, I mean, I mean, it's important to look at them and understand who they are and just thank God we're not them. Because these are all these fake, you know, fake brave wannabe tough guys. They're not the crazy brave. They're the, they're the fake brave. And, and I'm not taking pleasure in it, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to stab hard. You know what I mean? So... Forgive some of the viciousness, but it just has to be done right. You know what I mean? So let's do it right now. So you've got Jack Dorsey, this cowardly, succubus, no one, this this fallen, degenerate filth, this nobody, this 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 DMT 
uh, Prozac head, drug addict, microdosing, LSD, uh, MDA, drug addict. Okay? So you've got this, this, this scrofulous, rotting creature who thinks we don't see what he's doing and thinks we're stupid. And you've got him on with Joe Rogan, this fake pushed garbage feed against the public. And since he began, George Soros fought Hitler and cut his head off in a battle in the bunker in 1945. I mean, just cartoon land, Marvel comic stuff. Everyone has turned against him. My son calls him Joe the Snake Rogan. Strangely enough, people at the office were calling him Snake, but not like a snake plex, not a cool thing. So let's get into it. Twitter CEO tells Joe Rogan he doesn't know why Alex Jones was banned. A lie. That video is on Infowars.com. This is Friday's podcast. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey tells Joe Rogan Trump is no worse than Obama. What is that statement? He's scared of regulation. No worse? He's trying to end racist laws against blacks for triple jail times. He's trying to pull us out of endless wars. He's trying to, oh, yeah, he's no worse. You think, you think that's like a nice thing he's saying? It's a lie. So there's those reports. But let's get into the meat and potatoes, because, you know, I always print stuff in case they take it down. Because he's Joe's got his moderators deleting any videos critical. He has a Google interface just like the new york times does that's the whole congressional investigation right there yeah yeah joe we know about it um you little little handlers but what's really big here is that all of his videos now are unpopular they've gone from being 90 percent popular to eight to one unpopular 6.3 k pro 42 k anti now that was an hour ago but you, 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 if you're a TV viewer, you see it live there on screen. Let's read some of these comments. Document cam shot, please. So here's the good news. No one is buying this now. Thousands of comments. I read like 100 earlier. During the, I scanned over. No one is supportive. Everyone sees directly through it. And that's the human algorithm. That's what's beautiful. But let me tell you the scandal. Joe Rogan, when he's up there pumping Bitcoin, that I told you eight years ago, is a scam and is a tulip mania bubble. Oh, a psychotic, a sociopath, a Satanist would say, Alex, you were dumb. You could have made $100 million. People say, well, that's a big number. No, we, we, we bring in $40 million a year, but half that's product costs and every expenses. It's not that much. Uh, BuzzFeed gets $300 million a year in profit, $100 million from Soros, and still can't make a profit. So people are like, oh, my God, $40 million, I don't need to support you. $40 million gross. <laughs> Let me explain this again. We have millions in bandwidth cost every quarter. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. My goal, measuring my Johnson... My spiritual Johnson is not how much money I make. It's how I take on the establishment and change the world. And for changing the world with our audience that took action, I salute you, we hit the zeitgeist, baby. We're trillionaires in God's eyes. So I'm not saying everybody involved in Bitcoin is bad. I'm not saying any of that. Right at the end, wanting a dead cat bounce, here comes... Jack Dorsey, who actually is behind a lot of Bitcoin scams, and Joe Rogan's main sponsor. We have the press releases right here. They don't tell the viewers, though. They just go in there and they say, oh, yeah, I think Bitcoin's going to go back up. Oh, here's where you go invest. Oh, it's really great. Jack Dorsey doesn't even in the videos tell you he's the owner. This is totally illegal in Securities and Exchange Commission stuff. I mean, you all know about Martha Stewart. Somebody sold like $800,000 of stock. She didn't know about it. She didn't answer the question right. She spent four years in prison. But Joe Rogan's up there with his securities advertiser. Not telling you about that. But he's protected, see. He can be part owner in a big facility that has over 1,000 people a year in Austin alone 
that take ayahuasca and other hallucinogenics that are all illegal, Schedule One narcotic, psychotropic, but he's protected. So he's going to run pump and dumps. He's going to sell you failed Bitcoin. He's going to send you to help centers where, oh, you're rich. Oh, we got a medical doctor. Oh, let us, let's put you on drugs and we'll get your money. I mean, this is criminal crap. This is hardcore mafia, Las Vegas mafia, whole thing. And they just are like, well, you know who we are? We'll kill you. And I'm like, line up, bastards. Because <laughs> I ain't for sale, bitch. You don't think God doesn't create a signet, a symbol, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lives up a standard? <laughs> Everything's on the line. My family, my name, everything. I'll never submit to you. You've met your match. Get ready. Just get ready because you are going to pay now for everything you've done. And this window of Joe Rogan, my whole 20 years knowing him, now it's God's plan, opens up and I can see through the victory, the potentiality of what we're going to do. Oh, let's look at some more of these quotes. We'll come back and play some of the clips. Joe Rogan's podcast is sponsored by Cash App, which is true. Cash App is a product made by Square Inc. The founder and CEO of Square is Jack Dorsey. Not telling you he's there selling you a security on air because they think you're a dumb new ager on DMT. Gotta love how Jack never answered why Alex Jones was banned. Also love how Joe never asked Jack why celebrities and SJWs weren't banned after threatening the Covington's Catholic kids. Twitter and Facebook are the downfall of already dysfunctional society. These psycho run people's lives for a like and a moment of self-importance. Joe 2016 outspoken, opinionated. Joe 2019 cowardly, worried about Hollywood status. It's my show, but <clears throat> I am pleased that when Joe Rogan started endorsing George Soros and all these lies and, and these Sandy Hook things I didn't say that his audience totally turned against him. That, that, that just, you know, despite being censored and shut down, the public got it, they came through. I'm not taking pleasure in Joe getting all this hate, but see, he's just doubling down now. He opened the door. So now it's all these corporate CEOs, it's all the failures, and then they're running Bitcoin scams on his show, not telling people they're advertisers. In my view, the federal commissions should look at this. Because it's a fact. I mean, I wouldn't take the Bitcoin money. But now when it's a dead cat bounce, Jack Dorsey's pushing a collapsed fake commodity on Joe Rogan's weed head viewers. Because Joe is very scientific. He's like, well, I'm going to target weed heads. I think they're a bunch of loser idiots. They want to be manly ninjas. I'm going to teach them I'm their daddy. So Joe Rogan's like the daddy of the weed heads. And he brings in Jack Dorsey to gang rape them together. This is the manly thing they do. I mean, this is sick. These are some sick people, okay? And 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 so the listeners are pointing it out, eight to one attacks in, uh, in these videos, and they're, they're trying to delete comments. It's not working. It's in fuego that you've got a major feeding frenzy going on. But I thought I'd actually play some of these clips because it's such horsemen or Jack Dorsey knew I was going to be banned everywhere and decided to get more attention for a few weeks before he banned me. And then Joe wants to really kiss his ass because, you know, Jack Dorsey's paying him. The word is $300,000 a month, and Jack wants a major bump to get his viewers to sucker into Bitcoin that's already collapsed. Like, these suckers will buy a dead cat bounce. And, and Joe's like, really? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And so when he's looking at 10, 20 million a year if, you know, he just scams his viewers, which he'll do. I mean, this isn't flashlights. This isn't all. No, no. This isn't ayahuasca cults. This is Bitcoin, baby. So Joe's like got his knife sharpened for his fans. He hates it. He just sharpened it. Get that knife for you. So yeah, it's already to a Satanist. It's even sweeter to sell him something totally failed, even when it's failed. It's just oh, it's so sweet. So. Oh, we love our Somalis. We love our Muslims, too. Oh, they so good. Oh, they so sweet. Joe's kind of an Islamicist. So he's there, and they realize this is happening. And so how does he sell Bitcoin scam to his viewers 
with three hundred thousand dollars a month. How does how does he get Jack Dorsey to give him a million a month? How does he do it? How does he do it? How does he do it? So then Jack Dorsey comes out on the show and says he doesn't know why I was banned off Twitter. You were I was banned because it was part of a large Pentagon hijack plan by Obama with funding we already covered earlier to shut me down to set the precedent for everybody else. You know damn well what it is. Oh, but on a magic algorithm like Lucky Charms did it. So <laughs> let's go ahead and go to Joe Rogan and Jack Dorsey talk about Alex Jones. Here it is. I I believe it's something that everyone has a right to. Everyone but, has a right to, but you still ban people. Like but, say like like Alex Jones, you guys were the last guys to keep Alex Jones on the platform. Mm -hmm. You were the last ones. Yeah. And I believe you hung in there until he started harassing you personally, right? No, 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 no. He, he did he not. He came to your house. He banged. No. <laughs> hey, Paul, start over. Because Joe goes, Joe called me like four or five months ago. And he's like, why are you banned? And I said, well, here, there's a Pentagon plan and, and Obama funded it and He's like, well, I thought the Pentagon likes you. Not the military, the people that run the Pentagon. And I'm like trying to tell him, he's like, oh, well, you're, you're such a chaos agent. Well, I'm like, listen, I don't care, Joe, fine. I just stop saying these, these talking points about Soros and me, and it's obvious you're paid off. So, so, again, that's why I'm bringing this up, is he won't stop lying about me. And so we'll play in a moment, because you heard, you heard, the owner of Twitter say, oh no, Alex Jones didn't harass me. I didn't harass him. I said, thank you for claiming your first amendment, but I didn't say use battle rifles in the media. That's made up. So that was the official story. We'll get to it in a moment, but let's, let's finish up. Like, like Alex Jones, you guys were the last guys to keep Alex Jones on the mm -hmm. platform. You were the last ones. Yeah. And I believe you hung in there until he started harassing you personally, right? No, 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 no. He, he did he not. He came to your house. He banged. No. <laughs> no. He, uh, you know, he, he did very different things on our platform versus the others. Oh, uh, um, okay. So we, we saw this domino effect over a weekend of one platform uh, banning him and then another and another and another in very, very quick succession. Right. And, you know, people... I think would have assumed that we would just have followed suit, but he didn't violate our terms of service. Right. And afterwards, he did. And and we have, you know, we have a we have a policy, and if if uh, you know the, there's a violation, we take uh, enforcement actions. One might be asking uh, the account holder to delete the tweet. Another might be um, a temporary suspension. Another might be a permanent suspension. So. What are you saying? So, like, let's uh, use in terms of, like, him saying that Sandy Hook was fake. He did not say that on the platform. He did not say that on Twitter. He only said that on his show. I don't, is, know, I don't know. I don't know all the mediums he said it in. What but, did he do? But what we're looking at is the is the, is a conduct and what he did on our platform. So what did he do on your platform that was, like, that you all were in agreement that this is enough? Uh... I'm not. I'm not sure what the what the actual like you know violations were, um, but we have uh, we have a set number of of actions, and if they keep getting, if if the, the vi if an account keeps violating terms of service, ultimately it leads to permanent suspension. And when all the other platforms were taking him off, we didn't find those. We we didn't we didn't find those violations, and they weren't reported. But again, it goes back to a lot of our model. People weren't reporting uh, a lot of the tweets that may have been in violation. Right, let's stop right there. Uh, Darcy, just so you know, in your little meth head world, I know what you're doing. I was the top story in those months. You just held off so you could keep yourself in the news cycle and then ban us. We didn't do anything. It's all crap. You let Islamists talk about cutting women's genitals off. You harass conservatives everywhere. You do whatever you want. You can't say what we did because your lawyers have said don't say anything because we have you. We have you. But your little butt boy, Joe, is up there like, oh, he attacked you, right? Well, you know, let's talk about that. So this is all lies, ladies and gentlemen. They let leftists do whatever they want on Twitter, threaten to murder people, kill people, everything. But they can't say what I did because they looked at it. There's nothing there. You just watch what I did. It's because what I say is so true that they can't deal with it. So let's play a few clips. I'll cover this more on the weekday show tomorrow. We're almost out of time here. We're like a minute left here. But 
Uh, let's go to uh, Alex Jones confronts Jack Dorsey about battle rifles. Because they said on the news, I said, go kill media with battle rifles. I didn't say that. I never said that. I said, if Antifa comes to your house, be ready with your battle rifle to defend yourself. So this is where I supposedly harass him. He's just, hey, please defend free speech. Here it is. I know. Hey, Jack, I appreciate you supporting the First Amendment, but I have a right to face my accusers, Jack, and I never I never threatened the media with battle rifles. So CNN's lying. CNN is destroying, is destroying free speech. CNN, CNN and the Democrats, you know, are destroying the First Amendment and needs to be stood up against. Mr. Dorsey, when can I have my verification back? Obama set up a CIA office to shut down independent press in the U.S. I am a journalist. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Obama set up a CIA office before he left to shut down independent populist media in the U.S. And Trump knows that he's getting ready to sign an executive order reversing it. But Trump didn't. So it just elapsed last week and all the layoffs are happening. So I don't have time to get the other clips. I'll play it all tomorrow. But Oliver Darcy, all of it, that's why they said they banned. This is a public figure calling for me to be banned. I say, man, you're an anti-American jerk. They go, oh, my God. You know, you've got a 20-inch neck and he doesn't. He's like a little slithering snake. We're banning you. So... Uh, Counter Think with Mike Adams is coming up at Infowars.com forward slash show. The Super Bowl's on. I know it's so incredibly important. Watch a bunch of, you know, steroid heads.